During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, there was one shocking execution that changed the face of history. An anointed queen was sent to her death on the scaffold inside of the Great Hall of Fotheringhay Castle, and Mary Queen of Scots, in many people's opinion, should have been the rightful Queen of England. She had a rather tough final few decades, and had been held a prisoner of Elizabeth I for a number of years, but on the 8th of February, 1587, she was summoned from her room inside of Fotheringhay, and was then met inside the Great Hall by an executioner armed with his axe, with a low block on the floor. An executioner named Bull fell to his knees and asked the Scottish Queen's forgiveness, and her execution was performed poorly, and not in one swift blow. Her servant, Lady Jane Kennedy, had blindfolded her, and she knelt down, and then the axe fell. But following her death, Mary Queen of Scots remains were subjected to a strange ordeal, and some parts of her were buried in hidden locations at the site of her execution, which today is simply just a hill in a farmer's field. But she was entombed later, after her son, James I, then ordered her burial inside of Westminster Abbey. It took two brutal swings of the axe to take Mary Queen of Scots' head from her body, the first swing from the executioner missed her neck and embedded in the back of her head, which was incredibly painful, and the Queen would have been awake during this part, but may have been knocked unconscious. Then the second swing was more accurate, but there was a tiny part of sinew left keeping her head attached, and this was then sawn through by the executioner with his weapon. As the crowd had gathered to watch the bloody proceeding, the executioner held her head up to the onlookers, and her head then slipped from the wig that was on top of her head. It hit the floor, and someone said that her lips stirred up and down for a quarter of an hour after her head was cut off. A small dog then emerged from her skirt, and remained by her body after the execution. However, Mary Queen of Scots was seen as a traitor by many across England and had been linked to many plots against Elizabeth I, but to Catholics she meant so much more. They believed that she had been sent by God to rule over Scotland, and many wanted her as the Queen of England, as Catholics believed that she was the rightful Queen. But to Catholics, they would have collected relics from Mary Queen of Scots, and the authorities, following her execution, ordered that all of the property belonging to Mary should be burned inside of the fire in the Great Hall of Fotheringhay Castle. They were worried that these relics would be venerated and preyed upon for centuries to come. But the question then came as to what to do with the body of Mary Queen of Scots. It isn't exactly clear what happened with her body, but it is believed that after her execution and the crowds cleared from the hall that her remains were collected and were then taken to a more private room inside of the castle and inside here her remains would be prepared. There was little instruction given for her burial after her execution and Elizabeth I never made plans for this, but her body was taken to its believed to be embalmed. Prominent people were embalmed to prevent decay occurring quicker, and her body was prepared to make sure that it did not putrefy, and her entrails and innards were removed. However, what is strange is what may have happened to these insides. At times, queens had them buried in specific places close to them. For example, Jane Seymour, the third wife of Henry VIII, had her heart buried inside of the chapel of Hampton Court Palace, and it's believed that this was placed under the altar. Other queens, for example, Catherine of Valois, it's thought that en route to her funeral, her innards were buried at stops where the funeral procession rested. But Mary Queen of Scots' entrails and remains, including her heart, it's believed, were in fact buried inside a Fotheringhay castle, in a very secret location close to the place where the executioner swung his axe. For this, it's believed that it would have been within the inner or outer bailey, or close by the river that passes by the site today. This means that today, under the field where the castle once stood, it's likely that Mary Queen of Scots' heart is still there, as it has never been accounted for, and these would probably have been buried inside of a box or a chamber. 
They may still be there today, and still may be under the ground. But what is also shocking is what happened to her body inside of the castle. After her innards were buried, she had been embalmed, and it was hoped that she would remain without decay for a while, but her remains were then left for around six months locked inside the walls of a room at Fotheringhay. They had been encased in a lead-lined coffin, which helped to keep out the decay and rot, but Elizabeth had mentioned regretted her execution, and also she did not really know what to do with her funeral. With this, Mary's remains just stayed there at Fotheringhay, and they caught dust there, and it's believed that Elizabeth's ill feeling towards ordering the execution may have caused her to stall on what to do next. Mary had asked that following her death that she would be buried with her first husband, Francis II of France, but Elizabeth did not allow this, and instead she was to be buried at Peterborough Cathedral. What must have been concerning at the time was that Peterborough Cathedral could have become a place of pilgrimage for Catholics, as Catherine of Aragon, the first wife of Henry VIII, is buried there, and also her half-sister, Mary I, or Bloody Mary, had requested to be buried in the same place as her mother. All these women had one thing in common, and that they were all Catholic queens, and their place of burial, especially Mary Queen of Scots, could have been visited for centuries to come. She was given a funeral inside of Peterborough, but in one final act of disgrace to the former Scottish monarch, she was given a Protestant funeral, which was completely against her beliefs. A chariot adorned with black velvet, decorated with insignia and symbols linked to the Scottish monarch, carried the coffin, and it travelled from Fotheringhay to Peterborough, and the journey was not too far. But Mary Queen of Scots would not remain at Peterborough Cathedral for long, as after the death of Elizabeth I in 1603, her son, James, then became James I of England. This meant that if Mary had outlived Elizabeth, there was a good chance she could have been her successor. But when James came onto the throne, he was disgusted by the treatment of his mother in, in death. He ordered her exhumation from Peterborough, and then designed a huge tomb for her, as well as Elizabeth and these would be at Westminster Abbey, with the two rivals being entombed close to each other, near to Henry VII's Lady Chapel. The final act of disgrace for Elizabeth I was that Mary's tomb was larger than the English Queen's, and the second burial of Mary Queen of Scots occurred in 1612. But what is disturbing is that still today, part of Mary Queen of Scots may lie under the earth at Fotheringhay Castle, left under the soil for almost 400 years. It's known that her heart and entrails were buried there, and although the castle does not stand today, there may be a darker side of Fotheringhay, which has not been unearthed. Mary's treatment after her execution was shocking, and her remains were also just left to rot unburied. But Elizabeth I should have done the decent thing, and buried a woman that she did have great respect for in a decent manner, and in a place and service which was befitting her beliefs and wishes. But Mary Queen of Scots did not get that until her son came onto the English throne. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.